Okay, so this is uh, this will help you uh, go through your discounted rates uh, program. So these are the directions we were looking at uh, in class. We need an exit button, of course, ten percent off button, or uh, this really should be a ten percent off uh, option. Uh, we need a twenty-five percent off option, thirty-five, fifty percent off option, and then a custom uh, percent option. And of course, we'll need a calculate button to execute all of those options. So we're going to open up uh, Visual Studio, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a new project. Now, if you've already created yours, that's fine. You can open it and uh, double check it, or uh, whatever uh, you want to do. I'm going to call this the discounted rates, and yours really should be called uh, the same. So discounted rates, and we're going to go ahead and create this project. And through the magic of the uh, internet and video uh, editing, we can uh, fast forward and it pops up pretty uh, pretty quick. We don't have to wait for it to load. So the first thing I want to do is rename this form. I'm going to go right over here down to name and I'm going to change it to FRM. That is the appropriate prefix for form and we'll call it main. We don't want to leave it as form one and then I'm just going to click off uh, somewhere then it's saved and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the name because I don't want it to say form one up here and I'm not I don't want to change the name. What I want to change is the text. So I'm going to highlight the text and I'll call it discounted rates, which is uh, the name of my program. Now it looks uh, pretty good, but we need some options. And when I looked at the assignment, we saw all the options. So what I'm going to go uh, ahead and do is put those on here. So we're going to fast forward in just a moment. Okay. So I have my five uh, options here uh, for the various percents off the custom uh, percent off. I have uh, button one, which will be calculate button two, which is exit. So let's go ahead and uh, name all these. But real quick before we do, if you're having trouble finding your toolbox, um, like if you close out of it like this, you're not going to see it over here. And make sure you're on this screen because if you're inside the code screen, you're not going to be able to find your toolbox uh, whatsoever. It's going to show up empty. So make sure you're on this screen, the design. And what you're going to do is hold control alt X and then your toolbox will appear. So we have some radio buttons, and uh, so we're looking under all Windows forms, scroll down to the R's, because it's in alphabetical order. We have our radio buttons right here. We can double click, or we can uh, drag and drop them over there, and my buttons are near the top, because they start with uh, B's. So when we're uh, naming these, I can get rid of that one. When we're naming these, uh, we want to call them opt. So, because they are option buttons, they're referred to as radio buttons, but the prefix is opt. And my first one is 10% off. So I'm going to do opt 10. I'm pretty sure looking, yep, it's 10. The next one is 25. So I'm going to call this opt 25. And I'm going to just keep renaming all of these uh, appropriately. So uh, we're going to fast forward and um, we're going to have these named as well as changing the text so it doesn't say radio button four. We're also going to do these for the buttons. Okay, so everything is uh, named. I misspelled uh, off with a P. That's not how you spell off. There we go. That looks a little uh, looks a little better. So we have 10% off, 25% off, 35% off, 50% off, custom percent off. Sure, it's great to uh, have the user know what these are. I mean, that's extremely important. But what you need to know as a programmer is that all of these have an appropriate name. It should not be radio button one, radio button two, radio button three. It gets, uh, is you start forgetting which radio button is uh, what. By giving them a custom name, it's much easier. We've done the same thing here with the button. We called it BT and exit and our calculate BT and calculate. It's a lot easier to know what these buttons do if I name them appropriately. If I leave them as button one, button two, that's a problem. Uh, I, can, I may easily forget which one does which, which is going to slow down. The other thing we need are some text boxes. We need the user to show um, or allow them a chance to type in the price. Then we want to show them the discount. And then what we want to do is show them the final price. So we're going to put in text boxes. We're going to open our toolbox. We're going to scroll down. And when you find text boxes, uh, if you look in the R, you'll see a rich text box. And then you'll see uh, a simple text box. And we're looking for a the simple text box. They're typing in a set of numbers, uh, not very long. So we're going to uh, go ahead and click on these or double click on this three times. One, two, three. And then what we're going to do is we need to name uh, these uh, text boxes. So my first one is going to be the price. My second one is going to be uh, how much the user saves. My third one is going to be the total. Now, looking at my program, the user is not going to have a clue what these text boxes are. So what I also need to do is go ahead and put in some labels. 
And what I can do with these labels is I can label each text box and um, I'm going to put label three next to text box three. It doesn't really matter because I can name these uh, whatever I want and I will name these. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call this text cost. This is going to be uh, text save. When I say text, I mean TXT. So TXT cost, TXT save, TXT uh, final. And that will show the final price. And then what I'm going to do is label or uh, call this LBL uh, cost, LBL uh, save, and then LBL um, final. So we're going to go, so they tie into the text boxes. So we're going to go ahead and uh, fast forward and have that done. Okay, so I have my text, uh, my text boxes here. I've called uh, the bottom one TXT final. My savings one, I've changed it to TXT savings, and then my first one to TXT price. Uh, that will be uh, a little bit better. You can call them whatever you want, as long as you know what it is referring to is uh, fine. So what we wanna do is, um, let's uh, go ahead and make our program work. Let's go ahead and program this exit button. And when you're programming the exit button, you have to make sure you're double clicking the exit button so you get to the right part of your code. You can't just put it wherever you want. We're gonna go up to the top. We need a variable. And we're gonna do uh, dim str exit as string. And this should be a uh, review. If uh, you're in class and you don't know how to do this, you may want to study this so you can put it into your long-term uh, memory because it will show up on your programming uh, test. So we'll ask them if they're sure they want to exit, and then we want to go outside uh, the parentheses, or I'm sorry, outside the quotes, and then VB, yes, no, we want to give them those options. So what this does is if they type, uh, if they hit the button yes, it'll get stored in the STR exit. If they hit button no, it'll get stored in STR exit. We've recorded their response. And then if STR exit equals VB yes, then what we want to do is shut down the application and that is simply application.exit. If they hit no, we want the program to keep running and because the program is going to run if we don't code anything for no, we don't need to code anything else. So uh, we're going to go ahead and hit control S. This changes the green, which means we have saved. Uh, anytime you start typing something new, it'll show up in yellow, which means that you have not saved that new line of code. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to program this calculate button. And uh, what we need to do is we need to take what they type into the text uh, price box. We need to store that into a variable. There is no way for us to know what they're gonna type in. And when we can't predict what they're gonna type in, we need a variable. And they could, of course, enter in um, not a whole number, but a decimal. So we need to dimensionalize that as a decimal. So we're gonna do uh, int um, price as decimal and even though int is the prefix uh, for integer we can leave it as int price if you want to get uh, technical you can do dec price for a decimal we also need um, we need one to hold the custom percent off so we'll do um, dec custom actually we'll do D dec yeah custom will work as decimal and that needs to be a decimal because we're not going to do um, a whole number we can save a little bit of math by doing that and then we need one more variable which will be final price as a decimal and we'll talk about how we can make sure it only goes out to uh, do two digits so we'll do that uh, towards the end of our program so make sure you have these and uh, with these I think we're ready to go. So make sure you're on your button calculate uh, click. If you did not name yours button or BTN calculate, you gotta find out what that button is. The easiest way to do, if you don't know if you're in the right spot, go back to your design, double click on your calculate button, it will automatically take you to the right sub. Now these subs are known as procedures. The only way these will activate is when you click on them. So all the code I type in here will only activate and run once the user clicks on that button, how do I know it's click? Because it tells me right here. When the user clicks, what do you want to happen? And that's what we're going to program uh, to do. So the first thing we want to do is take that price out of the uh, text box. So int price equals txt price dot text. So what this means is I'm going to take the price that's in my text box and we're going to put it into int price, but we changed it to dec price, and then that will get rid of the red line. You can't just make up your own variables. You got to declare them first, and that's what we did 
right up here. And we can see STR exit is being used, DEC price not used just uh, yet. So then we're gonna have a bunch of if statements. For example, if they click on 10% off, we want to run a math formula that will give them 10% off. If they hit 25% off, we want to run a math formula that will give them 25% off. We are still in our calculate. Now it's very important you take you store the price first. If you don't store the price first, there's not going to be any math happening or the price may come out uh, wrong. And that's a good way to get fired if you're programming uh, for a company. So let's go ahead and do the first one. So if opt 10 dot checked equals true, then what do we want to happen? Well, we want we want to give 10% uh, off. So what we're going to do is we need to look up here. So we, we're going to be using uh, DEC final price. So DEC final price is going to be equal to the the cost times 0.10, which is 10%. Now here's a problem we're going to run into. What that is going to do is give us just 10% of the price. That's a problem. That is a problem uh, indeed. So here's what we're going to do. And uh, we're gonna save a little bit of line of code uh, by running it like this. This will give us 10% of the price. That's fine. That is fine right now. So what we're going to do now is, what we're going, we're gonna to go to the, our text box, text savings.txt equals DEC final price. But here's the problem I run into. Now I'm using a variable for two separate things. That can get confusing uh, really quickly. So rather than doing that, because this my savings isn't the final price, what we want to do is go ahead and declare another variable. Uh, let's do DEC savings as a decimal. And what that will do is it'll make it a little easier uh, for us. So what we're going to do is let's change this to DEC savings, that will give us the savings, and then I can change this. And now when I'm checking my code, I, it will be a lot easier to read, and it'll make a lot more sense. If I'm checking this, say, two weeks from now, final price, why am, why am I putting that in the savings text box? So by adding an additional variable there, it makes it a lot easier to read. Now that I have the savings, I can now calculate the final price. And my final price is gonna be the initial price minus the savings. And that will give me uh, the final price uh, that I need. So uh, that will be uh, there. Now the savings, what we're going to do is we're gonna uh, post that at the very, very end. We can actually uh, have this at the end as well. So we're gonna move this outside the if statement and then we want text uh, final to be equaled to our final uh, price. We don't need to have that run every single time. That's going to run regardless of uh, what they use. So uh, that's how that works. We're going to go ahead and type in the if statements for the rest of our options, and then you'll be able to pause the video, double check, and make sure you have something uh, similar. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and fast forward where all of those are done. Okay, so we have our if statements here. If you want to pause uh, the video, uh, you can. If option 25 is checked equals true, meaning it's highlighted, then we have our savings. We multiply the price by 0.25, which is 25%, and then we that's our savings. We subtract it for the price to get the final price, and we've done the same thing here. What I wanna draw your attention to is this opt custom. Okay, so we have a text box where they can enter um, their custom price, but it's not showing. So let's go ahead and create that. We forgot to create that one, and, and that's okay. And as you go through uh, programs, um, you'll, you'll come across things that you forgot. So let's put that uh, right over here. And when they select custom percent off, they'll be able to enter uh, into this box. Now we're not going to uh, error check right now because you're just beginning uh, to program. But later on, what we can do is we can double check and make sure that uh, this box is it empty. And if it is empty, we can prevent our program from crashing when they select uh, custom percent off. But right now, um, we're not gonna do that. So let's go back to our calculate uh, button. Let's just get this thing working uh, first. So if opt, opt custom dot checked equals true, then our savings is the price 
multiplied by the custom percent off. Now here's what you're going to run into right here. Right now, we have not loaded any value in the custom, which is gonna be zero. If I don't load anything into this, it's gonna be zero. So I'm gonna take the price, multiply it by zero, and then when I do the price, it's gonna be whatever the standard price was, minus zero, so my final price is gonna be identical to the starting price. So we need to make sure we load this. So our DEC custom, we wanna equal, equal to what? And that is going to be this text box, which we need to name, and we're gonna call this TXT custom. Because it's dealing with the custom percent off, I can go back to my code right down here where I was looking and then txt custom dot text. Now notice I have a lot of yellow over here. Control S will change that. Okay, so now my savings will take the price, multiply it by the uh, custom uh, percent off, and then we subtract it just like we did. So we're using the same formula. The only thing that's changing is DEC savings. And then what we're going to do is we're gonna save the savings, put that into the text box that says savings, and then output the final price for our customer. So now what we need to do, now that we've saved, is we need to run our program with some test data. So scroll up here to the top, uh, just so you know a future shortcut, just hit F5, it'll compile your program and run it for you. So let's go ahead and run our program and see what we got. Okay, so here's our program. Let's do a price of $100. Now when I have $100, 10% off of $100 is $10. What we wanna see is $10 in the savings box. We wanna see $90 in the final price box. That's what we wanna see. And we do, so we know our 10% off is working. What we're going to do now is we're gonna do 25% off. 25% of $100 is 25. The final price should be 75. We see the savings is 25, final price 75, that is working. 35% off, we should see 35 here, 65 down here, we do. 50% off, we should see a savings of $50. 100 minus 50 should be 50. All right, perfect. Now for your custom percent off, here's what I would do. You already know what the price of 10% off, 25% off, 35% off, and 50% off should be. So we're gonna choose 25% off. So we're gonna type in 25, and we should see the savings be 25, the final price 75. But it doesn't, it comes out to 2,500 and negative 2,400. Let's talk about why. So in here, with your DEC custom, they the user input a whole number. So we're doing the price multiplied by 25% off, the price times 25. That's not what we're looking to do. To get that to a percent, what we need to do is take our custom price and divide by 100, and that will give us the percent. It looks like, oh, there we go. So let's run our program again, and we should see it uh, working. So it's okay if you get uh, wacky numbers. I knew we were gonna get wacky numbers. It was to prove uh, that point. So we're gonna do 25% off, and it should work now. And it does, 25, 75. Um, let's go ahead and do 60% off. 60% uh, of 100 is $60. So we should see 60 here, 40 down here and we do, and uh, it's working. I hope you found this video uh, helpful. If you have any questions, please text me. This video is coming down uh, Monday, so it's just up uh, for you so you can make it through your first program in case you get stuck. If you have any questions, please text me. We'll see you guys in class on Monday.